Hello scrappers and planet lovers, Tin Man here with another video. So behind me here I have a microwave oven and a rotisserie oven. You do find them sometimes on garbage day, especially the microwave ovens, and they are an excellent source of scrappable material. I can bring both of these in as is and get appliance weight price, which is about five to six cents a pound. This one weighs 15 pounds, this one weighs 20, so no work involved, I'm gonna get money from both. However, they are worth taking apart. There is some copper inside, there is some brass sometimes, some aluminum, some stainless steel, and they are very easy to take apart. So what I'm gonna do today is do that, show you how to identify the material, and more importantly, how to maximize your profit and divert both of these away from the landfill. So I'm gonna start actually with the outer shell. I have gone ahead and removed the screws just for the sake of time. But you can see this shell is magnetic, as is this one. This shell is actually gonna give me tin price. And currently right now at in Sarnia, sorry, it's going for about eight cents a pound. In London, Ontario at Zubik Scrap Metal, I can get 14 cents a pound for tin or shred as some yards call it. So both are a great price and tin, it does not take a lot to add up weight. So that is a great thing about tin. This one, however, as you can see, it too is magnetic, but this is classified as magnetic stainless steel. And magnetic stainless steel is going for about three cents more at Zubik, so 17 cents a pound for this. It does depend on how much you have of it. Uh, if I was to bring in a load of tin and just had this outer shell for three cents a pound more, I may as well just keep it all together. Uh, that way it saves me from going different piles in the yard. If I had a large load of it, however, because there are a lot of appliances, barbecues, for example, as well, uh, the outer appliances, uh, coatings on your dishwashers, your fridges, uh, stoves. If I had a large pile of that, then it would be worth my while bringing it in as magnetic stainless steel. So you do have the option, uh, in my opinion, depending on how much you have, if it's worth separating uh, is up to you. But magnetic stainless steel. If it was non-magnetic, uh, then it would be good stainless steel or classified as good stainless steel and is currently going for 70 to 75 cents a pound. So if it was non-magnetic and it was stainless steel, you want to make sure you separate that. The other nice thing about these, both of these, is a lot of times in your ovens, for example, or microwave ovens, they do have different trays. So inside of here, there is a couple trays you can see. These are magnetic, so these are just going to give me tin. This one in here has another rack. Sometimes you can actually resell these. Uh, this one is actually a decent uh, condition, uh, perhaps looking at it, uh, using it myself, or selling it in a yard sale. Um, actually, both of these pieces came together. Um, this is a good sellable item. If I paid or someone paid $5 for this, gonna be worth a lot more, or even $2, it's gonna be worth a lot more selling it than bringing it in for scrap value. Inside as well, you do want to check some of your baking sheets. Can also be aluminum. This one, it is magnetic. If it was not magnetic, uh, it could be aluminum. And aluminum right now is going for about 50 cents a pound. So a lot of your trays, you want to check those. This also had a couple rotisserie or skewers. These are going to be magnetic and give me more magnetic stainless steel. Uh, it's unfortunate that some of these are heavily... Uh, worn because these could be uh, useful for me, but at least diverting them from the landfill is a good thing. I also have the rotisserie wheel. Unfortunately, I can't resell this. You can see there's a lot of gunk on it. There is some rust. This coil here is a heating coil. It is non-magnetic. There are on your ovens, stoves, inside of dryers as well, or sorry, in washing machines, dishwashers, there is always a nice heating coil that you will see. They are their own category. You can see it right in the back here. Um, I separate those, I will put them into, they're about 15 to 20 cents a pound. Depending on your scrap yard, um, they are usually non-magnetic. Some of them will have the coil going through it. Some of them will have some powder if you cut it, but heating coils, uh, separate those. It's usually about, as I said, about 15 to 20 cents a pound, um, but those are gonna be inside of these. The other thing I do wanna mention about the outer panel is even though there is on these doors some tempered glass, because there is 
uh, some magnetic attraction. This is still going to give me tin price. I can leave those on, so I'm not going to get penalized for that glass. And as well, the last thing on the outside, I've already cut these. But here are two examples of 60% appliance wire. At a scrapyard for any type of appliance wire, they have two categories, your 40% appliance wire and 60%. Because both of these have only one layer of plastic, a scrapyard will look at plastic to copper ratio and copper recovery. This because one layer of plastic, there is higher copper content. So at 60% appliance wire, this is currently going for $2.19 a pound. If this was your thicker wire, uh, microwaves for example, vacuum cleaners, dehumidifiers, they all have an outer layer of plastic. When you cut it open, there's usually two or three strands of coated copper inside of that. Because there is higher plastic there, less copper, that would be your 40% appliance wire. And even that is going for a good price. That is right now $1.35 a pound. So both are great, but you do want to separate this because this is your money maker in terms of wire. They do also have, as you can see, some brass plug-ins. Uh, this is yellow brass. This is your coated brass. Both of them are actually in the same category. Some people will leave these prongs on for the weight. I do take them off. I will put them into a separate bin. I have a large bin collected of just brass plug-ins. And brass right now is going for $3 a pound. So in my opinion, it's worth separating, but it does depend on how much you have uh, and the type of scrapper you are. So as I said, some people leave them on for the weight. Uh, I have already removed this side, very easy to do. Uh, we want to make sure you remove the screws from the outside and the inside. The only real item that I have here is my control panel, and I'm just going to cut the last part. So this entire box now is actually, once I remove that heating element there, the rest of this is just going to give me tin price. And the great thing about any type of microwaves that I have is they're a great storage unit. I will throw a bunch of my cutoff pieces of tin in here. Uh, parts of my compressor, the metal parts of that, put them in here, builds up weight, easy to transport. So a nice tin box here to use for storage. On the side was my panel. So here is my light bulb. Okay, nice piece of tin again. This is my coating powder. This is my control box. There was the copper wire and I just cut it off for the uh, video, but there is my dial. Inside of that, you can see the bell. This is gonna have some copper inside of it. Here as well as some more nice 60% appliance wire that you see here. There is gonna be a transformer on this side. So I am gonna go ahead, just remove right now the screws on the last part here. Easier for you guys to see when it's smaller. Both of these are gonna be the same. Uh, this one might have a couple more bells in it, but just going ahead and right now, remove these screws. My screws, I always have a magnet close by. I'll just put them on there and easy to store up. Those screws I put in a large container and I will bring them also in as tin shred. So don't lose any value from these. Uh, the screws, easy to build up weight for those for sure. I just actually brought in 10 pounds worth of screws. So it is very easy to build up weight. Okay, so I'm just gonna cut out this bell here. This, it's got nice brass prongs on it. Look at that, there you can see some of them, these, actually these are gonna be copper prongs. Uh, sometimes they're brass, sometimes they're copper. Inside of this, if I hit this open, there is gonna be some copper as well. But I am gonna just gonna start with this Gonna get this last transformer out. I gotta make sure I get all my screws. Pull out this lever. There we go. Okay, and sometimes if I just, if they can be stubborn, just gonna hit it out with a hammer. Break the plastic if I have to. There we go. Okay, but here, right here, is gonna be another nice copper wire here, copper motor. Just gonna quickly open it. Take out the screws. These are your types of motors that you find inside of microwaves. Uh, very easy to open. Very nice number two copper. Number two copper right now is actually going for $4.43 a pound. So copper is our scrapper's gold, if you will. 
So just taking the last couple screws off. So here we go. And all I'm gonna do to open this, this is a little bit of tin that I have, but very easy just to open this. I'm gonna put it into my vise. Close that up. Sorry, I had it opened already. I was working on a big uh, compressor, so I had to use this, but just gonna put it in my vise like this, secure it. Just gonna actually use my hammer now and hit this out. Okay, sometimes they can be stubborn, <laughs> some depending on the type, but just gonna try it again. But it is gonna come out. probably the, one of the most feistiest ones I've had, but look at that beautiful copper. It's persistent, but so am I. So all I'm gonna do now is just kinda open that, and this will actually just start sliding off. Sometimes I can take off the metal, but I wanna make sure I get that plastic out of there. But look at that beautiful copper. Okay, so again, sometimes it can be tricky, as you just saw there. Sometimes they just easily slide off. But look at that copper just coming off there, okay? So this is number two copper, as I said. The rest of the inner core here is going to be um, tin once I remove this. And I should have also said, especially nowadays, you do want to check these coils. Sometimes it looks like copper, but if I scratch it, it will reveal a metallic underneath. And that's because a lot of manufacturers are replacing copper coils with aluminum. This, as you can see doing the scratch test, is copper, so number two copper. The other thing that I wanna caution is, a lot of times it looks like bare bright, but bare bright copper only pertains to copper wire that is thicker than 16 gauge, and 16 gauge is about the thickness of the lead of a pencil, so this is definitely not 16 gauge, so all number two copper. The other thing I wanna strongly recommend, and a lot of people forget about this, is this too is copper. So all I do is I will actually use a pair of side cutters. I will just cut it, cut that wire, fold it up. Okay, and I will feed that out as well. Get every little bit of copper that I can. All right, and like I said, it all adds up, but it's a nice little bit of copper still. You don't wanna pass up any copper. There you go, so you can see little bits just fold off there, okay? So that too is a little bit of copper. I throw that into my number two copper as well. The rest of this shell is gonna be tin. I am gonna hit this bell here because as I said, both of these have a bell in it, just to show you what's inside. All right, and there's gonna be a little bit of silver in here as well. Okay, these are always like your relay boxes, but just gonna open it once I find a real screwdriver. Okay, just add a little steel case on it. There we go, pulling it out. Okay, the nice thing is I always break the plastic just to play around with it. Okay, but it's just gonna fold open. Okay, I, I have had some of my Students ask if they can have the bells. There you go. But inside of this is gonna have a little bit of tin or sorry, yeah. And then there's also going to be one of these. You can see in there, that dot right there is actually a little bit of silver. So that is actually a silver contact. I will cut those off and I will put them into a little vial. But the rest of this prong here is copper. It's not heavy, but it all adds up. As well, as I said, the shell, there is going to be some uh, tin here. And there are right there, I do have to open this, but you can see a little bit of brass on those spokes. So once I open that, I'll be able to get that out. And it's very easy to do. Just going to take a pair of tin snippers sometimes. Sometimes I'll use a, a grinder. Um, but you want to make sure you get that little bit of brass there, okay? So yellow brass again. 
okay? And very easy. Uh, the light bulbs, last one I want to talk about. Light bulb, I may not be able to do anything with, uh, but here again, a couple of brass prongs uh, on this. There is a little bit more wire. Uh, I was also told as well recently that any type of your brass prongs that you see like this, uh, Zubix, if I put them into a bucket, Zubix will buy these for dirty brass for about 17 cents a pound. So little connectors, for example, off of your wires like this, uh, I can get 17 cents a pound for it. So better that than go throw into the garbage. My light bulb does have right there a little bit of brass. So I just pull that up. There you go. It all adds up and some more tin. Okay, so last thing here, this too is another one. I'm just gonna open that later, but this does have some medical or uh, magnetic attraction. The outer casing of this is gonna be cast aluminum. Uh, so cast aluminum right now is going for about uh, 50 cents a pound. I do have to remove the screws, open it up, because if I was to leave it as is and have magnetic attraction, it's going to be dirty cast, so about 15 cents a pound. So wanna open that. Um, but some casting here. This one, same thing as I said, if I was to open this shell, and I'm not gonna do the whole thing, but just wanna quickly uh, see if I can tear this open. But there are a couple more screws on the bottom. It is going to be the same layout as my rotisserie. And I do actually have another video on a full breakdown of other small appliances like this. I do have another toaster oven. Sometimes, you know, different models uh, can help viewers, um, different styles, if you will. But these, as I said, very easy to do. They're all built the same, uh, same components. Great scrappable materials on all of them, okay? And again, once I am done opening that up, taking that bell, there is another great item here that I have to store my scrap when I go the next time to the scrap yard. So a nice handle holder, if you will. There, just gonna pull this out. Hit this with a hammer. Okay, and I don't wanna scratch myself with this. It is a little sharp at times, but there we go, pulling that out. This one here does have a small circuit board, but it is the same components on there. There is gonna be another uh, transformer, if you will, motor style like this that has copper, has a lot of tin, some brass, some silver, uh, and two great items to divert from the landfill. So quick video, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please comment down below, like, share, subscribe. And I'll catch you on the next one. Tin Man out.